Hello friends, I am Professor Vagmadi Bihar. Today we will discuss the topic on crop production technology of uh, Napier grass. This is very important or popularly used for the uh, livestock feeding. You can see the first one uh, botanical name uh, that is Penicetum purpurium and the family belongs to uh, that is Poesi and the origin of this Napier grass that is from Africa. Then next way, uh, point that is uh, uses of forage Napier grass. Uh, it is a very uh, interspecific hybrid between the napier grass and the permalate and it is very uh, variously known as the napier uh, bazar hybrid elephant uh, then uh, elephant uh, bazar hybrid then hybrid uh, napier pusa giant uh, napier giant uh, elephant grass then gajraj and then babla uh, napier hybrid these are the variously uh, uh, various names of these uh, Napier grass. Then it is an succulent, uh, leafy, fine textured, palatable, uh, 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 then fast growing and the drought resistant uh, grass. Then it is of uh, uh, it tillers freely and the single clump may produce the more uh, uh, more than 50 tillers under the favorable soil and climatic conditions. Then it is highly uh, high yielding than many of uh, many of uh, other grasses and the forage or green biomass of this uh, napier grass contains 10 to 12 percent. Uh, and then 2.1% uh, ethyl uh, e, 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 then 30.5% uh, uh, crude fiber and then 16.2% uh, ash and the 41% NAFE and the 0.5% calcium and 0.4% phosphorus. That is 10.2% crude protein and the 30.5% uh, crude fiber are the essential uh, uh, elements or the nutri nutrients for the livestock, especially for dairy cattle as well as the Calcium and phosphorus is available from this napier grass, and also napier grass is also used for the making of uh, silage. Then toxicity: the oxalate ogde content in the napier grass varies from three to six percent. The, it can be mitigated if the harvesting is done at later uh, layer interval of uh, 45 to 60 days. The animals should fed with the legume and the grass. It will be more uh, highly nutritious for the livestock, and the feed should be uh, fortified with the 10 gram per day of calcium carbonate to the uh, to make up the loss of calcium next one the ecology conditions especially for uh, the, the cultivation of napier grass requires the uh, sandy loam to clay loam size then pre drainage or uh, the proper drainage is essential as the grass can't uh, withstand prolonged uh, uh, water loading condition and it, uh, it can also be grown in the saline uh, or the sodic soils and the phenomenal yield uh, are obtained on very fertile soils uh, rich in organic matter and the nutrients and the, it can tolerate uh, soil pH range of 6.5 to 8. Then climate, it can grow both uh, tropical and subtropical regions. The warm humid weather as it uh, uh, as in the monsoon season is most uh, congenial uh, for its growth and it is a drought resistant once established can uh, survive under warm and dry summer period and its rainfall requirement varies from 800 to 1000 mm. And the minimum optimal uh, temperature for better growth of the napier grass uh, ranges from 24 to 28 degrees Celsius. Next one, the field preparation. As the grass remains on the field uh, for a year of three years or three to five years, uh, it requires one plowing with the help of multiple plow. Then followed by two to three harrowing operations are required to obtain the good seed bed. And also it requires the deep weed free and the compact seed bed. Then varieties of this napier grass, the popular varieties are Pusa Jain, then NB-21, uh, then Sveti, then IGFRI-3, then uh, IGFRI-6, then IGFRI-7, that is the International Gra <coughs> Grassland and Fodder Research Institute, uh, located at Zansi, has developed the IGFRI-3, 6 and 7, and then Nesvent, uh, this is a popular variety, as you known as Nesvent grass, uh, will be available in the, uh, most of the, uh, region in the Maharashtra and the also NB-5. These are the varieties of uh, napier grass. Next point that is seeds and sowing. In case of the seed rate, the stem cuttings are rooted slips. That is in case of the napier grass, this, uh, uh, the propagating part that is seed as well as the pro planting material or cuttings are used for the sowing uh, material. That is in case of stem cuttings, uh, the number of stem cuttings are rooted slips required per hectare that is 27 to 1000 to uh, uh, 33,346 per hectare. 
and the spacing between rotor row and plan to plan that is 60 by 60 or 100 by 30 centimeter because it having the uh, sprouting habit or the tillering habit hence it requires the wider spacing then sowing time that is june to august uh, then depth of planting that is our depth of sowing uh, that is 3 to 4 centimeter and the sowing method that is a very popular method that is planting uh, uh, is only one method of uh, sowing in case of napier grass the grass you can see here in detail the planting method how, how can it uh, produce the material of planting uh, that is planting material uh, or the propagating parts the you can see the grass does not produce viable seeds hence it, it, it will be propagated through the stem uh, this is very popular uh, the seeds cannot be used for the sowing because seeds are very small in size uh, generally the very popular planting material that is cuttings or rotary slips are used you can say here detail the three budded seeds are uh, may be inserted into the soil uh, in a slanting position at 45 degree angle for, to the ground because it will be helpful for the better sprouting of these uh, regrowth of the uh, uh, shoots then uh, two birds should be remain in this uh, inside the soil and the one above the ground that is the total number of budded seeds should be selected that is three and should be inserted in the slanting position at 45 degrees angle and two birds should be inserted in the inside the soil and one should be kept on the ground or above ground then furrows are opened with the ridger or country plow then three birds seeds are placed uh, end to end in the furrows like sugarcane just like sugarcane planting you can uh, put these seeds on the uh, at the center of the furrow uh, uh, then uh, field should be irrigated if the moisture is in inadequate for sprouting then tillers along with the roots are uh, separated from the old uh, clods and then each road slips may consist of two to three tillers of 10 to 12 centimeter height along with the roots then tiller uh, along with the roots are separated each slips may consist of two to three tillers of uh, 10 to 12 uh, centimeter height along with the roots then these rotated slips are to be inserted into the soil by uh, dugging hole with the khurpi this is the uh, detailed information regarding the planting of the napier grass Next one, the planting material treatment. Before planting, cuttings of the napier grass are dip or soaked with the thyrum slurry. Helps, it helps to the prevent uh, so the soil borne or the plant uh, seed or as well as seed borne diseases. And cuttings are also dipped with the biofertilizer like azotobacter or azospirillum. Helps to enhance the nitrogen fixation by symbiotically and also improve the germination of the seed. Next point, that is nutrient management or fertilizer requirement. Uh, the napier grass requires uh, 15 to 20 tons of FIM or compost per hectare because this is a perennial uh, grass which requires the more dose of the uh, manures that is 15 to 20 tons and the recommended dose of fertilizer that is 50, 50, 20 kg NPK per hectare. The NPK should be applied at the time of uh, uh, that is full dose of P and uh, K and the half dose of nitrogen should be applied at the time of planting and thereafter at every cuttings 25 kg of nitrogen should be Crop days. Then water management. The frequently frequently of uh, frequency of the irrigation depends on the rainfall and weather conditions. Planting in February or the March needs to irrigation and every seven to ten days interval for the better establishment. And during summer irrigations at fortnightly interval and after rainy season it uh, at uh, at every third week interval may be given. We, in case of weed management. Uh, the interculture uh, culturing may, may be done twice to, or thrice till the crop is fully established and grow vigorously and the subsequent interculturing should be done as and when required uh, through the interculturing operations the uh, weeds can be managed because uh, it will be it is a pea growing and the hay growing or the uh, dense you know, growth of the grass hence it require it does not require uh, any weeding or the uh, owing operation only you can carry out the interculture operations and then harvesting and yield uh, younger crop uh, of this napier grass contains highest amount of the oxalate which can deplete the calcium from the body of the animal uh, since uh, the first cut should be taken after 9 to 10 weeks and the subsequent cut can be taken after 4 to 6 weeks or when the grass attains a height of 1.5 meter in north india the five cuts are taken up to the end of november and the south india 7 to 10 cuts are possible. In order to encourage the quicker generation from the basal birds, the harvesting should be done uh, uh, with the living of uh, uh, living a stable height of 10 to 15 centimeter 
from the ground level and the yield of uh, fodder uh, uh, get uh, it will get from the naphtha grass that is 25 to 35 ton per head this is the today's topic about regarding the crop production technology of uh, naphtha grass thank you